Okay, what we have here is a complex manometer system. And this system is actually more complex than you'll probably encounter in practice. But if you can solve this level of complexity, then you definitely understand manometers. And so what we have is two pipes, PA and PB. And we're trying to calculate the difference PA minus PB. And we have th three different fluids. We have water in pipe A. We have uh, water in pipe B. We have a column of mercury at the bottom here. We have a column of water. And then in the top region up here, we have air. And I'll talk about how to deal with that. You'll also notice we know heights H1, H3, H actually five, we do not know the heights H2 and H4. So we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that some way as we proceed with the problem. Okay, I'm going to work from the pipe on the left side, so PA towards PB. And I want to emphasize that when you're doing this on the midterm exam, you really want to work in symbolic form as long as you can and then substitute the numbers in at the end. That's the absolute way to optimize your part marks. If you start substituting numbers in right away and you make an error, it's very difficult to tell your thought process, your thought process and to give proper part marks. So I'm going to write here you should work in some symbolic form. Okay, starting from PA, I'm going to work downwards here from PA down to this point, which I'm going to call point 1. And P1 is actually e equal to PA. Now I'm going downwards in water, so the pressure is going to go up. So I'm going to say plus gamma, and that's gamma of water. And the height here is H. 4 plus H5. We don't know H4, but we'll deal with that later on. Now I've got to 1. I'm going to go across here. I'm going to jump across to this point here because point 1 on both sides of the manometer is in the same uh, depth of mercury. So if you're in the same uh, depth of fluid, uh, then you have the same pressure. So the pressure on on this side is equal to the pressure on this side. So that expression that I've written here is actually the pressure at P1. I'm now going to extend that and move up to point 2. And because I'm moving up, the pressure is going to go down. So there's a, I'm going into shallower mercury, if you like. So it's going to go down by the amount gamma of mercury. Uh, times height h5. And that gets me, that I could set equal to p2, but I'm not going to do that because we're heading towards pb, and when I finally get to pb, I'm going to set the whole string equal to pb, and that'll help me solve the problem. So that's equal to p2. Now I'm going to advance up all the way up here to point, what I'm going to call point 3. So we're going upwards, so the pressure is going to go down, and this is in water, so it's going to be, oops, it's the gamma of water, and now we have H1 plus H2 plus H3 plus H4. And that whole expression that I've written here is now the pressure at 3. Now, normally what we would do is we would go straight across here to get the pressure at the other side. But the next fluid we have is, is air. And the, the gamma of air, for most practical purposes, is very, very low. Uh, it's about a thousand times lower than water, so that would be about 13 or 14,000 times lower than mercury. So three orders of magnitude, it can be neglected. So what that means is the pressure in here doesn't actually change at all. So we'll write P equals a constant. And that means that we can come all the way down to here and the pressure at 3 applies at that point. Now what I'm going to do is go down to 
to point B. And I'm going down, so the pressure is going to go going to go up. And we're going down in water, so that's plus gamma water H2, and all that now equals PB. Now I can do a little rearranging, but before I do that I'm going to cancel some terms. We should find now that our unknown heights H2 and H4 uh, disappear, and you can see because we go up in H, we go up H2, we go down H2, we go down H4, we go up H4. So we should be able to find that those cancel. So over here we have uh, gamma water H4, and here plus gamma water H4, and over here we have minus gamma water H4. So we can cancel that term with that term. Similarly, let's look at uh, H2, which we don't know. Uh, it should cancel out. Here we have minus gamma water H2 and over on this side we have plus gamma water H2. So we can cancel that term and that term cancels out. Now we have that PA minus PB. So I'm going to bring uh, B over onto the left hand side and take all my gamma H terms over onto the right hand side. And that's going to give me minus gamma water H5 plus gamma mercury H5. And this term is going to become plus, so it's going to become plus gamma water H1 plus gamma water H3. And I think that's it. Yes, that's it. Now's the point where you'd want to do the substitution. And for the purpose of this, I'm just going to take gamma water to be, of course, it's rho g. I'm going to take it to be a nice round number, 98 newtons per cubic meter. And so we can do our substitution now. PA minus PB equals minus 9800 newtons per cubic meter times H5, and H5 is 0 0.15 meters, and you can see you get the right units, newtons per meter squared, or pascals. And now I'm going to, for the mercury term, I'm going to take 13.6 times 9,800, 13.6 times more dense, 13.6 times more specific weight, newtons per cubic meter, times H5, which again is 0 0.15 meters, and we have plus gamma water, 9,800 newtons per cubic meter, times H1, and H1 is 0 0.35 meters, and then plus 9,800 newtons per cubic meter times H3, and H3 is 0 0.18. And if you calculate that out, you get 23,716 pascals. And I recommend always, it's very rare that you know numbers more than three digits. Your input data is usually not more accurate to three digits, so I recommend rounding final answers to three digits. So the answer is 23.7 kilopascals. And that's the answer.